Hello everybody and welcome to this new course about graphics using the Odin programming language. Uh, if you haven't heard about Odin, it's a relatively new programming language. It's not even 1.0 yet at the time of recording of this video. And in this series we'll use Odin to do graphics programming, uh, which is basically just filling up a two-dimensional grid of pixels with colors. Um, we can draw lines and text, we'll do both. Uh, you can trace or cast rays in either 2D or 3D, and we'll do that. Um, you can rasterize polygons. Um, that's a much more complicated topic. Usually you project 3D polygons, usually triangles, onto a two-dimensional projection plane, and then you rasterize those in two dimension. Um, we may end up uh, doing that later, but not initially, just because it's a very complicated topic. Uh, hand coding, what do I mean by that? So basically no, no dependencies, that means using the native platform API with the custom bindings that we'll do for Win32. Um, we'll do a purely software renderer using only the CPU, with no hardware acceleration. And we'll define some custom uh, math procedures. It's not going to be anything super expensive or super complicated. I've also made this video recently, uh, going more into depth about the reasoning behind the whole handmade approach of doing everything by hand from scratch at least once, at least at the beginning. Um, I'll just say that uh, particularly for graphics hardware, um, the reason the big reason uh, in favor of doing everything by hand at least once is that whenever you use the graphics API to talk to the GPU, there's a lot of things you have to deal with that have absolutely nothing to do with graphics. They have everything to do with uh, communicating with an external device that's outside the CPU, involving moving memory around and orchestrating the execution of code, etc. Um, so not using those um, allows for a, actually a better focus on graphics itself. Another video I've recently made um, covers the overall anatomy of graphics applications, basically how all the pieces fit together and how they talk to each other. If you haven't already, please have a look because we will be following the design covered in this video. Um, okay, let's see what we'll actually be doing. Uh, we'll create a window, we'll handle some of the messages, the ones we care about. We'll chase some rays against some spheres. Uh, we'll do like very simple ray sphere intersection. Um, it will be simple enough to run in real time, even on the CPU without multi threading or anything. Uh, so we'll have two camera controls that are interactive with the mouse and keyboard one a first person shooter, and the other like a 3D uh, DCC application with uh, like orbiting around the target. Uh, we'll be capturing raw mouse uh, movement because we don't want to rely on the cursor which gets uh, stuck on the edge of the screen once you get to it. Um, and we'll have like a heads up display like HUD which shows the resolution and frame rates. Um, just to quickly demo where we'll be going with this, at least initially. So as you can see it's just a window, it's dynamically resizable. Um, it's just shooting some rays into some scene with a bunch of spheres. The um, shading is just the facing of the normal direction of the uh, surface of the sphere at the hit point. Uh, you can see it's easily um, um, real-time performance there. Um, obviously it gets a bit slower when you enlarge it. Uh, by default, we're in an orbit mode, so we're orbiting around the camera, it's just the, with the right mouse button, and with the middle mouse button, I can pan around, and with the mouse wheel, I can scroll in and out. I made it so it gets darker as it moves further away, uh, just for depth perception. Um, so, so that's the default mode, and then I can double click, and now I'm in first person shooter mode, so I can move around with the QWERTY. Uh, I don't know if you can notice, but there's a bit of like acceleration, acceleration, deceleration as I stop moving. I can move up and down also. Um, and the mouse wheel does an actual zoom, so it's changing the field of view, as you can see. 
Um, yeah, I can go pretty rapid. Um, prerequisites for this course: um, some foundation in, in uh, math, in linear algebra, particularly. It's not a, a math foundation course. Um, some foundation in in programming. It's not a, a basic programming course. Um, some familiarity with the, with Odin itself, the programming language. It's pretty new. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but um, it's it's also not a like a, a course about how to use Odin and all of its features. Um, and some uh, development environment. Uh, I'm assuming you already uh, done some Odin development on Windows. Uh, I won't go through the process of, of setting up a development environment. It's very straightforward. There's no installation. You just download and unzip, basically. Some useful links. There's a GitHub repo for the series, which will have all the code, the two uh, YouTube videos that I've made, and the Odin um, website itself. That's it. I uh, hope to see you in the first session. Bye.